Elie Wiesel, author and Holocaust survivor, said, whoever survives a test, whatever it may be, must tell the story. That is his duty. 20 years ago, my life changed, and I'm truly grateful for this path. I'm here to tell you my story. In 1995, I was a student at the University of Georgia in Athens. One night, my friend Clint asked me if I would come hang out with him at work. He worked the night shift. And I'd finished studying, so I said yes. Clint worked at the Bulldog Inn, which is a motel on the outskirts of town. It's in an area known as the Iron Triangle, which <laughs> isn't the safest area. But Clint assured me that he would lock the door to the lobby and that we would both be perfectly safe. As I drove to the motel, I suddenly heard a voice in my head as clear as if someone were speaking to me. It was late, but I wasn't tired. And when I heard it a second time, I thought, this is so silly. Surely everything will be OK. That night, Clint forgot to lock the door to the lobby when a man came in to rent a room. And within seconds, another man came into the lobby, pushed his way through the door, and put a gun to my head. He told Clint to give him all the money out of the cash register. Silently, I said to myself, don't pee on yourself. Don't pee on yourself. <laughs> I also cried out to God. I know that he loves me, and he has a plan and a purpose for my life. But I never needed him more than right then. As I relinquished all control to the man with the gun to my head, I felt eerily calm. The manager of the motel was waiting behind the office door with his own gun. And when the robber kicked that door and the manager shot him, uh, the burglar slumped to the floor, dead. And as I calmly explained to the police everything that had happened that night, they said it would all hit me later. The next morning, everything was brighter and bolder, louder, and on the way out of class, I saw an iridescent green beetle on the sidewalk, and I stared at it for what seemed like an eternity, mesmerized by its beauty and the fact that I was there and able to see it. But I bottled that experience up for years, putting myself into a constant state of flight. I was unable to relax or escape growing paranoia. I would check windows and doors, staying up all night, and always looking for the exit. In 2005, I decided to get help, and I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. What I learned in therapy is that fear is intended to be very brief. It is not paralyzing, but energizing. It is a servant of our intuition. Fear says something might happen, and if it does, we're going to stop fearing it, and we're going to start responding to it, or we'll begin to fear the next outcome. Fear is not an emotion like happiness or sadness or a state like anxiety. Fear is a survival signal. When you feel fear, listen. When you don't feel fear, don't manufacture it. And if you feel worry, explore why. Because worry is garbage. In Old English, the meaning of worry is to choke, strangle, or harass, to grab by the throat and tear. Worry is the fear that we manufacture to avoid change, to avoid admitting powerlessness, to protect against disappointment, or as a poor substitute for real caring action. The first of two rules that help me regain balance is the very fact that you fear something is solid evidence that it isn't happening. Do you fear falling from a building? bear attacks, bombs, or a broken heart. Feeling fearful means it's not happening right now. The second is remembering what is linked to fear. Our intuition has already made all of the connections for us to respond to. We must only bring those links to their ultimate conclusion. When it's real fear, we're in the presence of danger, and the outcome is either pain or death. Intuition is our gut feeling. It connects us to nature and the natural world. Intuition is knowing without knowing why. Inside us, inside all of you, is the information needed to make an accurate evaluation of any situation. 
somehow I knew is your intuition. It's available to us 100% of the time, and it's like a muscle that we need to exercise. It's there to guard and protect us, because the human brain is never more efficient or invested than when its host is at risk. Accept intuition as your survival signal, a welcome mes message. Use it to evaluate your environment or situation. Trusting your intuition is the exact opposite of living in fear. Trust that you will be notified if there's something really wrong. Pay relaxed attention to your environment and your surroundings instead of rapt attention to your imagination. Notice what is happening around you and trust that your in intuition will edit out what isn't important. The word survivor in Latin is super vivere, or super liver. And in French, it's survive, meaning to live beyond. So relax, choose to stop worrying, strengthen your intuition muscle, and embrace your gift of fear. My name is Jennifer DeWitt, and I'm a survivor. I know that you are too which is why I refuse to worry about you and why I choose every day to listen to my intuition.